Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. I am very excited about today's project because I have created four different beaded components that can be used in an infinite amount of ways. And this video is going to be slam packed full of ideas and inspiration. So keep watching because I'm going to give you guys so much information on ways that you can create jewelry. And so let's go ahead and talk about what I'm doing here. So I got this box from BeatingSchool.com by Erica Sandor, and the name of this box is Beating School Academy Box. The theme for the month of September and October 2021, because this is a subscription box, is called Magic Garden. And the box that I got is the turquoise level. This box is, comes in different levels. You'll see when you go to the website, and I will link this box down below there in the description bar. And I think what I'm also going to do, in case you find this video like a year from now, you won't be able to get this box. I think I'm going to link all the materials because I am using a bunch of different materials from this box. I will link them separately down there below in the description bar. So if you're watching this like a year from now, you can go and buy the things separately and do this project along with me. All right. So I'm going to be making four different components. I have the small one here, the medium and this large one and I'm going to be making a centerpiece with this huge cabochon here for right here and I'm going to stitch these together into a bracelet and if that doesn't work out because I've not totally gone through this whole project yet to know if it will work I will do a necklace with all of these but other than that you guys if you want to if you're not into making a big project like I'm doing you can use these little components to make other things you can do a ring with this. It would be an awesome ring. It's a really good size. This one here I think is my favorite just because I love the colors and the pattern and how all the beads fit together. It's really cute. And this one here is a little tiny mini sparkly ring. So yeah, so all three of them are pretty awesome. And um, you can do rings with these, earrings with these. You can stack these together like this to make an earring. You can do this little guy here on the top. Or you can do, you know, these two together, those two, you have different options. You can have earrings that are made like this from biggest to smallest, or you could have them like this. You could do one of them, you could do two of them. If you want, you can do, and I've done this before, you can make these and stitch them onto things. So I've made stuff like this before in the past, and I have literally taken hair, hair breadths like this one here. And if you go buy hair breadths, make sure you get this style here that has the two notches. There is this notch for thicker hair and then thinner hair all right because if you're giving these away or selling them you want everybody to be able to use this barrette but anyways you make these right and then you stitch them on like this but what I use to stitch stuff onto this metal barrette is beaching wire because it's really strong and durable and if you use thread this barrette will cut it but imagine like five of these stitch onto there it would be a really pricey barrette but it would look so amazing and nobody else would have anything like that you can also stitch these onto flip flops if you have some boring looking but yet comfortable flip flops you can stitch them onto flip flops I've done that before you can also stitch these onto dress shoes that are kind of plain like I said to make them look even better and I've done brooches you can stitch these onto napkin rings the the ideas for this project is infinite there are so many different things you could do with these little components here I want to do this big cabochon first show you how to make that one okay which that but this by itself can be used as a pendant you don't have to put this with those there's so many ways you could do this Here's the list of materials you will need to make the largest component. You're going to need to cut 5 feet of 8 pound fire line. You're also going to need a size 10 beading needle and you're going to need a ceramic cabochon. Now I don't know what the size of this cabochon is, it didn't say it in the box, but I am going to try and find out and I will list the size down below. And this is ceramic and the back of it was unfinished. It was raw ceramic, and ceramic sucks in moisture, so what I did is I just varnished this with clear nail polish. And also now it's very smooth and silky, and it's not rough anymore, so I recommend that you do that. And if you don't have clear nail polish, you can use some kind of a varnish. I have another varnish I use is a polycrylic varnish. I use that for making paper beads. And you're also going to need 10 6mm check fire polish beads. 10 Storm Duo beads. These have two holes. 
you're going to need 10 4 millimeter Montes, also known as sew on rhinestones, 10 4 millimeter check drop beads, 10 3 millimeter check fire polish beads, 11 Miyuki seed beads, and I have them here in two different colors the dark bronze and the turquoise color here and you will also need 15 OC beads. So here are all the materials that we are using to make the large component. I will have them all listed down there below. We're going to start by making the base for our cabochon to sit on and so I'm going to pick up a Storm Duo and do you see how they're, this is shaped like an S? Okay. So there's this rounded side and there's this indented side. It's like indented, rounded, okay. So you have to pay attention to the direction you pick this up. So I'm going to go through one of the sides. It doesn't matter where you start, but I'll go through the indented side now, okay. So I'm coming out the rounded side. So that means I have to pick up three seed beads, 11 ohms, okay. And then I'm going to pick up another one. But this time I have to pick it up going in this direction. So see, coming out the rounded side, picking up three seed beads, then going through the rounded side. Now I'm out this side over here, which means that I'm going to have to pick up one extra seed bead in order for this to be a round circle. So I have to pick up four now, like that, and I'm going to pick up another storm duo and I have to go through the indented side. So do you see these strung up here on the needle, looking at them, this area here with the seed beads, because the sides are rounded together, it's more narrow here, okay? And then down here, this is further apart. So to accommodate this hole to that hole, I have to add one extra seed bead. So then looking over here, see, indented, indented. So that's why I have three for this narrow area and four for the wider area. Now I'm going to have to repeat this over and over until I pick up all ten of my storm duos and I have to put the seed beads in between them and I have to make sure that I do the correct number so let's keep going I'm coming out the rounded side that means I need three elevens and I have to go through this next storm duo on the rounded side like this okay slide this down I have to pick up four because I'm coming out the indented side and then I have to go through a new storm duo but through the indented side so it looks like that slide it down and then pick up three and always look at what you did last so I have to go through the rounded side now coming out the indented side I have to pick up four slide those down I have to go through the indented side now because I just looked at my last one okay and this is what we have Okay, I hope this makes sense. But we have to do it this way in, in order for us to have a complete circle. So I have to do three. And then I have to go through the rounded side. I have to do four. And through the indented side, slide those down. And now three. And my last one coming out the rounded, I have to go into the rounded. Slide these down. And I will zoom in so you see what I have here. So again, I have the rounded side here, which we have uh, three here, but where it's indented is a wider space, so that's why I have to do four. So that's correct, 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 correct. Yep. Okay, I did it right. This looks good. Now I do have to add four here at the end because I have to make a complete circle. Let me make sure I didn't already put them on. I just didn't slide them down. Okay. So, like this. This is what you should have. End with the four because this is indented and we're going to be meeting an indented. Storm Duo on this side. I'm going to zoom back out. Alright, now I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to measure a six inch tail. 
because this is how much we need to finish this off. Hold here at the six inch mark. Make sure you slide all of your beads down to that mark there. Hold it like this and pass back through all of these beads. Careful, 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 good God. Careful that you don't skip any seed beads. Sometimes your needle will go around and avoid going through a seed bead. So like that. Okay, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go through the rest here. Okay, and I just have this little bit. We're just making a circle, basically. Okay, and I'm going to slide these down. Hold it like this, and pull the thread through. I'm not going to be tying a knot here, by the way, because this here will be adjusting itself as we add beads to the base. So... So we go like that, okay? See, we have a circle. Kind of looks like a flower. Make sure that my tail's good. My tail's great. Now what I'm going to do is take my needle and pass through this storm duo right here, okay? Because I'm coming out this side, like that. And I'm going to take this thread, my little tail, and just pass it through the same stu st storm duo, but in the opposite hole. Okay. So that's the short tail. And then take the long tail and go through like that. So we just repositioned both of our strings, one so we could pick up more beads and the other so later on it's easier to finish this design off. So we've passed through all of those beads two times now. So what I'm going to do, it's going to be so much fun. That part there was just the like probably the most annoying of this. I'm going to pick up a 6mm checked fire polish bead, slide it down, and it's going to go in between like that. And I'm going to do this all the way around. Pick up one, through the next storm duo, pick up another, through the next storm duo. I'm just gonna call it a duo. Okay. All the way around. Just now here at my last hole so I'm picking up this bead I'm going through this storm deal where my tails exiting out of and I'm going into the next one just like that pull all of your tail through okay and then you can pull both strings there so now we have this and this is what our cabochon is gonna sit on just like that so now what I'm going to do coming out of this six millimeter I'm going to pick up an 11 0 a 4 millimeter, a 15, an 11, a 3, 11, a 15, a 4 millimeter, and an 11. I'm going to go back through this bead where I started, and then I'm going to go through the storm duo and come out the next bead. Pass through here. I will pull this tight. Well, let me see. Pull that tight and then pull this through. Okay. This is going to stand up like this. We're going to do this all the way around. It's going to be a wall for our cabochon to sit in. We're basically building a wall. I'm going to pick up an 11 0, a 4 millimeter, a 15, an 11 0, a 3 millimeter. 11 0 and a 15 like this I'm gonna go through this one so see we're using this one here so that's why I didn't pick up a fourth or a, a second four millimeter so I'm trying to say it is a four so like that through that bead there pull the needle through 
So we have this. Okay. I have to put a seed bead here, an 11 ohm, to match this side. So pick up 111 and go through this 6 millimeter, through the Storm Duo, and through the next 6 millimeter. Like this. And as we do a couple of these, it's going to want to stand up. Right now it's laying down, but the third row, it's going to make it want to go like that for us. Little wall there, okay, so you can see my pattern. So again, I'm going to do an 11 ohm, a 4 millimeter, a 15, 11, a 3, 11, and a 15. Like this, through this 4. Pull all your tail through, so it looks like that, and then pick up an 11 and go through this 6 millimeter, this Storm Duo, and through this 6 millimeter. Okay, and stand this up on the side you want it to stand up on. Oops. Pull this tight, make sure you don't have any slack, and it looks good. So now it's actually sitting at a 90 degree angle there. See that? So that's what I have. You can go back and pull these loops to adjust to make it tighter if yours is loose. And I think I might hold it like this. I'm going to do an 11. 4, a 15, 11, a 3, 11, and a 15, just like this, okay? I'm going to go through this 4 here, pull this through, and then I'm going to pick up an 11, okay, I don't know if I can hold it like that. I'm going to go through this 6 millimeter, the next storm do it, and through that 6 millimeter. Pull this through, pull it tight, and you will notice that these 11 O's, they sit right beside each other. So again, 11, a 4, 15, 11, 3 millimeter, 11, 15, like this. Go down through this 4. Careful that you don't go through that 11 there. Pull this through. Pick up an 11. Go through this 6. Through the next storm duo and through that 6 there and pull this through. And then grab onto the bead that you're coming out of and pull it tight. Okay, you want a really good wall and you don't want to see any slack in your thread there. Again, I'm going to do an 11, a 4, a 15, 11, a 3, 11, and a 15. And then I'm going to go down through this 4, skipping that 11, pick up 111, going through this 6 millimeter, through this storm do and through that 6 millimeter, like this, and pulling this tight. Okay. So I'm basically going to do this, I'm repeating, all the way around until I get over here and I'll show you how to close it. So I'm going to keep going.
Okay, I'm now all the way around, and I'm going to close this up. I have to pick up 111, because I already have my 4 millimeter beads in place, so all I gotta do is skip over this Storm Duo and that C bead and go up through the 4, like this, okay, and then pick up a 15, 11, 3, 11, and a 15. And I'm going to sew down through this four. I'm going to pick up an 11 and then go through this six millimeter. Like that. And then I'm going to sew up through this 11 and through the four millimeter like this. Okay, I'm going to stop right here and pull this tight, and there we go. That's what we have. Now I'm going to take my needle and reposition it, and we're going to be closing up this here tighter so it hugs our cabochon tightly. So coming out of this 4 millimeter, I'm going to go through the 15, the 11, the 3 millimeter, and through the 11 OC bead right there. Okay, so I'm going through those beads there. Pass the tail through, pull this tight. I'm going to put my cabochon in now, and I got a lot of fingerprints on it, so let's see. Put that in, push the walls out, it sits perfectly in there. And now, what I have to do, hold the back flat, hold this in there with your thumb, careful to not drop this because we're going to go around the edge putting 11 O seed beads in to close the top up the top up. We're going to go to the next color now. Okay. So coming out right here, coming out of the 11, I'm going to pick up an 11 ohm. I'm going to do this pretty color here. It's a really long name. Can't even remember all the words in the name. And I'm going to go through these beads. Okay. Just like that. So I picked up my bead, skipping over the 15, I'm going through this 11, that 3, and that 11. Pull this through, and this is going to sit perfectly on top, right there, of our 15s, like that. And this is making this here smaller, so it hugs our cabochon. So I'm going to do another 11, and skipping over the two 15s, I'm going to go through these three beads let me see here okay just that there we go okay like that pull this through and there's another see that you can actually you're gonna want to use your nails to pop these into place make them sit right Another 11, skipping over the two 15s, going through these three beads, and I just do this all the way around. That sit like that, V shape. Okay, another 11. Skip over the two 15s and go through these three beads. Hold tight. So I have one, two, three, four in. That's what it looks like so far. It's looking better. And I love this color next to the purple. Another 11. Skip over the 15s and go through the 11, the 3, and the next bronze 11. like this. And I'm just going to do this all the way around. Okay, I've made it all the way around. 
Right there's where I started. I have just one here left to put in. So going through like that. See how pretty it looks. Make sure you put your thumb on there. And I'm bringing the last one down. Okay, I want those 15s to sit just right for me and pull this tight. Now this is the second time I made this. When I first made this, it went so smoothly. Everything went together perfectly. I didn't have to remake it again. But the other pieces, I remade those over and over till I perfected those. But this one here was just easy breezy. So I don't remember if I reinforced this row or if I just stepped down and did the decorating on the outer edge and then came back up and knotted here so for now I'm not going to I don't think I'm going to reinforce this right now I think what I'm going to do is decorate this edge here and then depending on how much thread I have left I'll know or not if I need to reinforce reinforce that area there okay so for now this is what I have so you just want to make sure that's sitting in there right this is what the back looks like nice and flat see it's really cool looking so we're now ready to do some more decorating and to do that I have to reposition my needle now so I'm going to sew down through this 15 and go out this 4 millimeter. So see we have this little window. See this little hole? Right there. All the way around. You can leave it like this if you want but I say there's enough empty space right there that we can decorate this little hole. So that's what we're going to do. Coming out the bottom, I'm going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads. Okay, and then a Monty, and then two 15s, like this. And coming out of this one, I'm going to zigzag like this, and I'm going to sew down through the next four, like that. This part is so easy just like that and it, it sits right there this is actually going to be an X when when I do this all the way around this step I will come back through and I'm going to make an X pattern like that so th it looks like it's crossing underneath of the stone there again I'm going to do two 11's a Monty and two 15's like this sew down through this one the next one Okay, sometimes it flips over, so you just want to flip it over with your finger there, and then pull it tight. Okay, like that. And I just do this all the way around, super easy. Two 11s, a Monty, and two 15s. Like this, down through the next four. Again. Two 11s, a Monty, two 15s, down through the next four. All right, so let's do this all the way around, and I will come back and show you what to do when you make it all the way around. I've now made it all the way around and this is my last hole here to fill so I'm going to take the needle go down through my first four millimeter there and pull that tight push that down now you would think that we're going to continue on going in this direction but I have to get my thread to go this direction now and I can't do that over here because I'm exiting out down here so I'm actually going to go backwards to where I just came from and do this pattern like that the X pattern okay so pull that tight I'm gonna pick up two 11s again we're gonna do the same thing basically but we're not gonna pick up another Monty we're gonna use the one we already have so coming out here two 11s I'm gonna go through the Monty like this pull the tail through and I was holding that weird so go like that 
hold my finger there. Okay, pick up two 11s, not 11s, pick up two 15s. And then I'm going to go back down through this 4 millimeter. And that's going to give us this X pattern. So I do like to, you know, move it around my fingers there and make sure it's sitting right. There's our first X. And I'm going to do it again. And this whole time, in this row, you're just going to be doing two C beads at a time. I'm going to do two 11s and then two 15s. So going through that Monty there, pick up two 15s. Sew down through this four. Okay. Two elevens through the Monty. Two fifteens through this four, down to the four. Okay, and that's what we got. So you could see how much more this adds to the design. Two elevens again through the Monty. Two fifteens down through the four millimeter. All right, so I'm just going to repeat this all the way around. You could actually say, looking at it here, do you see how full this looks? And this here kind of looks empty. Okay, I've now made it all the way around and I have to go through, I got my two 15s, I have to go through that four millimeter. And pull that tight. That's not the right thread. I'm pulling the tail, I'm like something's not right. Okay, so we now have this. Isn't that pretty? Love the colors, looks so good. I do have enough tail left over, and remember earlier I was worried. I didn't know, I didn't remember if I went back through the top a second time. I usually do on stuff like this, but when I first start designing it, sometimes I just skip doing it, because chances are I'll probably take it apart and change something else about it. All right, so um, I have to get back up here to reinforce this, and to do that, I'm gonna take my needle, and I have to go back, first of all, I have to go back into this I have to come out this way and I'm going down this way and if I go through here I'm, I'm only going to be able to go back down following my same thread path so coming out of this bead what we did if you remember earlier we went through this seed bead and then we went through this six millimeter here okay and then through this 11 and then we sew up through this four Make sure. Yep, right there. Like that. So we're just repositioning our needle. We're, we are now actually at the part where we tie knots, but I, like I said earlier, I wasn't sure if I should um, reinforce this a second time because I didn't know if I have enough thread. So I'm going to pass through like this, coming out the fourth of the 15, 11, 3, 11, like this. And I, I might be able to tie knots here if I wanted to. But I'm going to try and tie knots in the bottom with my other thread. So I'm just going to reposition, or not reposition, I'm just going to pass through these beads here. I'm leaving this loop here for now because I want to know where I started at. So we're just reinforcing this. all the way around okay I'm back at the beginning and I have decided not to tie any knots here I am I'm going to put my finger in this loop make sure this is tight there okay 
And then I'm going to pull this working thread that's going to go down through there, pulling that all tight through this 11 here. Okay, I'm going to go through a few more beads there in the next row to complete my circle. And then I have to go down through this 15. I didn't tie any knots, by the way, in this row. I don't remember if I said that or not. And through here, down through the four. Okay, I'm going to go through this 11, and we got to get into that six millimeter. Right here. It is best, by the way, to have a banana-shaped needle to work on this project. So this row here, this outer edge, only has one pass. So that's what I'm going to work on now, is tying knots here. So I'm coming out, I should hold it this way. I'm coming out of this 6 millimeter. I'm going to grab up this thread in between the 6 and the Storm Dew. I'm going to make a loop and pass to this twice. So where I'm going to hide my knots. Okay, and also reinforce, reinforce this outer row. Pull that knot down. Now I'm going to continue going all the way around here, making sure that I have at least two thread paths here, tying knots. So I've made it, I think I was like over here, to over here, I've now made it to my other thread, and see how they're actually going in the opposite direction. That's perfect because we can tie a surgeon's knot here. So I'm going over and under. And I kind of found out a while back, but I've still been doing it the opposite way, that you're supposed to tie a surgeon's knot by putting one side over the other twice and then pulling that down and then doing over and under once and then pulling that down. But for years, I've always done it backwards and it works just fine. So, and I actually like it more this way. So over and under once, bring that down then over and under twice. Maybe what happened is I actually learned it the wrong way and I've been doing it the wrong way my whole life but it still works. Okay so there's my knot. It can actually go again over and under and then over and under twice. Yeah so we just got a big knot right there. It's not going to be seen though. And now I'm going to string both of these together and so this is easier for me. I'm going to trim off this longer tail. Okay. And flatten both of my ends. And then pass both of them through my needle together. Like that. And I'm just going to continue on doing this and I found that you want your needle as I've been doing this while I was off camera I found you know my, ne my needle is very bent you want to make sure that when you which direction did I come from I came from here okay I see one thread there so you want to make sure when you're doing this you hold your needle curved like this to match the curve of this bezel that we're doing so I go through there I go through the six millimeter and see I'm keeping the bend here so it curves. Get what I'm saying? And sometimes your your needle will want to pass through that next bead. So I just push that down out of my way and there I go. I hopped over it and I go through. See I was worried that I would chip a bead here, but it ended up being pretty smooth. So just like that and my knot just completely disappeared so I'm gonna continue I think I will do some more knots going around as far as I can I'll go as far as I can and then when I can't go anymore I will trim it off but I might come up into these X's or maybe into the four areas here and try to probably the X's because I have two thread pads up there and just try and hide my tail and then I'll be all done with this one Unfortunately, this video is too long for me to show you how to do the pink stone here, so I will be doing that in part two. So this is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed part one. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos, and check me out on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.